attorney Bob Bauer released a statement in just the last uh, a little over an hour uh, saying that the Justice Department conducted a search of the Wilmington, Delaware home and found additional materials with classified markings. Now, uh, Bauer stresses that this uh, search was done in coordination with the president's personal attorneys, both the personal attorneys and lawyers from the White House Counsel's Office were on hand uh, for that search. A uh, source has also told us that it was specifically conducted by the FBI. And what Bauer said is that they opened up the home for this search uh, that included a search of the living, the working and the storage areas in Wilmington, Delaware. And I want to read you a bit of his statement that gets into exactly what types of materials they were looking through. Bauer wrote in a statement, quote, DOJ had full access to the president's home, including personally handwritten notes, files, papers, binders, memorabilia, to-do lists, schedules, and reminders going back decades. DOJ took possession of materials it deemed within the scope of its inquiry, including six items consisting of documents with classification markings and surrounding materials, some of which were from the president's service in the Senate and some of which were from his tenure as vice president. DOJ also took for further review personally handwritten notes from the vice presidential years. Now, the White House special counsel, Richard Sauber, said that neither President Biden nor First Lady Jill Biden were on hand for this search yesterday, which took close to 13 hours. But really, this marks the fifth instance that we know of uh, where documents were found either at locations tied to President Biden. There was first that discovery on November 2nd at the Penn Biden Center, that private office Biden used when he left the Obama administration. There was another search conducted in Wilmington, Delaware on December 20th, and then also another on January 11th. And the following day, more documents were found. But yesterday uh, did amount to the fifth time the documents had been found at locations tied to President Biden. Of course, it wasn't until much later after that initial search on November 2nd, uh, it wasn't until two months later that it was revealed that those documents had even been found uh, publicly uh, to this press. But this all comes as the White House has been grappling with this ongoing saga related to the classified documents. And one thing that they've faced some criticism over is their uh, initial un unwillingness to disclose the, the finding of these documents right away. And I want to uh, have you listen to what President Biden had to say earlier this week when he was asked whether he had any regrets about their decisions not to disclose things right away. Hang on, okay? Look, as we found, uh, we found a handful of documents were failed, uh, were filed in the wrong place. We're fully cooperating, looking forward to getting this resolved quickly. I think you're going to find there's nothing there. I have no regrets. I'm following what the lawyers have told me they want me to do. It's exactly what we're doing. There's no there there. Of course, this is a remarkable string of events that has unfolded over the course of the past two weeks. And now uh, with the FBI searching the home of a current sitting uh, president, of course, uh, the White House has been quick to point out that they are trying to cooperate fully every step of the way uh, with the special counsel's investigation, with the Justice Department, with the National Archives. Of course, they're trying to draw this contrast with the way that former President Donald Trump handled uh, the classified documents down in Mar-a-Lago as he is being investigated down there for obstruction. But the White House trying to make clear that they are trying to follow each step uh, that the Justice Department has laid out for them and cooperate in this matter. But at this moment, uh, just yesterday, uh, more documents were found at that uh, Wilmington, Delaware home, bringing the total uh, known classified documents found between the home and then also that private office to close to 30. I will also note that President Biden is currently spending the weekend here in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware with his wife, Dr. Jill Biden, uh, the personal attorneys had said that the uh, Rehoboth Beach home had been searched just uh, last week, uh, and now the couple is spending this weekend here. Yeah, search by uh, the personal attorneys, and we do expect FBI personal agents attorneys. to search other uh, properties connected to Joe Biden. Arlette, thank you. What, what a night there in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. She is traveling with the president. This is an extraordinary development. Uh, we have a number of experts to help us better understand what this all means, including CNN Senior's legal affairs correspondent Paula Reed. She is on the phone. And we also have national security attorney Mark Zaid. 
former federal prosecutor Michael Zeldin, and Aram Gavur, professor, a lecturer in law, at law at George Washington University. Thank you all for coming on. Mark Zaid, I want to start with you. You have a lot of experience dealing with uh, classified documents and so forth. What do you make of this latest development? Six more classified documents found at the president's residence, and how could this impact the investigation? Well, it's embarrassing. I mean, let's put it plain and simple. This has been mishandled from, from day one. I'm not concerned, even with the discovery of additional possibly classified documents, because just because they're still marked classified from however many years ago doesn't mean the information is still classified. We'll have to find out. It doesn't excuse it. I don't think it will impact the legal case involving President Biden for a number of reasons which we can go into. But this is obviously politically going to be fodder for the Republicans. And more importantly, unfortunately, it could, though it shouldn't as a matter of law, impact how the Justice Department deals with President Trump. Because as you've been saying, so many people are trying to make a comparison that this is apples and apples when it's not even close. The two situations are completely factually distinct. The bottom line, though, and you're absolutely right, there are key distinctions. Most of all, there is an obstruction investigation with Trump where evidence was developed, documents have been moved to other places. And in fact, when that search warrant was executed, they did find a, a, several classified documents. I think it was around 100, if my memory serves me, um, at Mar-a-Lago. But that aside, in this case, you have a sitting president's personal residence being searched by the FBI for nearly 13 hours. This is truly extraordinary. It's historic. And in terms of the national security implications, you say, Mark, you don't believe that this this is going to have serious implications on that front. But Arm Gavor, what would prosecutors be looking at? They're going to take these classified documents. They're going to look at everything um, that they've gathered as in, through the course of this investigation. Walk us through the process of what they're looking for to see if laws have been broken here. Hey, Pamela, thank you so much for having me on. Um, so at, at base, this is deeply embarrassing to the president. And uh, I think a big distinguishing factor that's uh, that's unfortunate for the president is that he's in the hot seat right now. Right. So this is this is not good uh, in terms of the process. Uh, Robert Herr, who is just appointed uh, by Attorney General Garland, um, is, is appropriately, as I understand it, from the facts that we all have together, using the FBI, Federal Bureau of Investigation, to do the investigation, which which he must. Uh, they're the fact gatherers. Uh, it, it appears from what I've read, same access information that you have, uh, that this was something that was uh, collaborative and there was cooperation on the part uh, of the president and his attorneys. And it's going to take a very long time as they very carefully and meticulously and rigorously go through the information to see that a crime, whether a crime was committed. Uh, and if indeed one was, it's still ultimately going to be the Attorney General of the United States who makes the call. So we know that six more documents with classified markings were taken, including other information, Michael Zeldin. And they mention um, handwritten letters. They mention materials, and we don't know if those were classified materials or not, from Biden's time as service. What would additional materials beyond those with classified markings, how would they help investigators in this investigation? How, why would they be pertinent here? So the FBI and the special counsel are investigating what is a mishandling of documents case now. And that question is, were these documents mishandled? The answer is yes. Why were they mishandled? Was it intentional or unintentional? That's being inquired of. Were they disseminated to anybody while they were mishandled? That's another question they have to ask. So they have to answer these particular questions to make a determination whether or not this mishandling of classified documents arises to the level of a criminal charge or whether it's inadvertent and therefore not criminal. In terms of what's in the documents themselves, that remains to be seen. But I remember, Pam, when I did the independent, my independent counsel investigation and we interviewed former President George Herbert Walker Bush in his offices in Houston, we said to him, Mr. President, do you have any recollection of this? And he said, well, let me go check my diary. And he went out, came back, came back with his diary and he said, no, I have no indication of 
that, but I do have an indication of this. So here's a president, former president with a diary in his personal office, which probably had classification issues that surround them. So I don't think that is in and of itself significant, but it is what the prosecutors need to ascertain before they can make a determination about whether something is classified or not. To what Mark said, though, and I think needs reiterating is these document cases point to the fact that there is overclassification in the United States government and that there are so many documents that shouldn't be classified that are classified that gets politicians who are unintentional in their handling these documents but sloppy in these sort of legal jams. And I think that one of the things mm -hmm. that Congress should be doing is looking at the classification system.